piece of meat, boy. Go, go, go. Well, welcome back to the StarCraft Weekly News. Uh, yes, it's been a long time, but we have been very busy and just kind of didn't get to do it recently. But it is finally back. It will be regular once again. And as you can see, um, yeah, this is not Seoul, South Korea. I'm actually in the United States. This is my backyard in New Hampshire that you are looking at right now, yeah. No wonder I played so much StarCraft, right? Um, and I will be in the States through USA Finals, which is at the end of September. So uh, everything's going to be with the little camcorder until then, until I do get back to Seoul and get back to the studio. So here we go. Let's get back and recap some of the stuff that we missed with uh, missing so many weekly news shows. All right, BlizzCon happened, and a lot of people showed up. This was a great, great event. And it... It was just an awesome tournament. I think it was the best BlizzCon tournament ever. Yes, a lot of Zerg vs. Zerg. We've seen so much Zerg vs. Zerg in every league recently. But these were some great ZBZs. Zero and Effort reigned supreme throughout the tournament. Zero got second place to Effort. And just amazing games. Super high level ZBZs. I suggest everyone goes and watches it. Zero's Mutalist Micro is nothing short of astounding. And Effort's overall play is just unreal. So make sure you go check out those VODs. They are pretty much all over the place. The replay pack has been released. And we have been making a few other VODs of some other commentate games that no one saw yet. Now, the two foreigners in that tournament, Rhett and Hydra, uh, they had really some great games in that tournament. Uh, you know, Rhett ended up beating Hydra 2-1. to one, And losing to Nada 1-2 in the game that Rhett won was an amazing and epic comeback on uh, Coliseum 2. So I definitely suggest that you go download that game and give it a look-see because not too often that you see a foreigner beat Nada. So that was pretty great. Now, uh, WCG season is in full swing. And WCG Poland, we're down to the top eight. The finals are going to be held pretty soon here. We have a lot of big names in it, such as Draco, uh, Tarson, and a whole bunch of others. And Yeba, of course, and Paranoid. Great, great players, and four other very good ones as well. Uh, but a notable uh, missing exception is Dreven, who actually will be taking a small break from StarCraft. So that's too bad, because obviously one of the best foreigners ever. Dreven is a great player, and so great at PvP. Always a huge threat in Poland. But as is, it looks like uh, if Draco goes into practice, he may have this one. But, you know, Tarson's great, Yeba's great, Paranoid's great, and the other guys can all cause upsets. So, actually, Poland this year, still a very scary country. Uh, definitely a very strong player is going to have to come out of there. Uh, some other WCGs going on. WCG USA coming up pretty quickly here. Uh, that will be about the 25th-ish uh, in New York City. Anyone around should definitely go to that. It's going to be a lot, lot, lot of fun, even though it's at an anime convention. Or maybe that will help you if you like anime. You know, up to you. But that's going to be a really great event. Uh, it, it's reasonably spectator friendly. The USA players are all really great, friendly guys. So definitely go down and check it out if you live in the area. Now, uh, WCG China finished up relatively recently. And the top three spots, only one of them really surprised me. You know, Fengzi ended up winning overall. And some people acted like this was a surprise. But I tell you what, in my opinion, Fengzi has been the best Zerg in China for a long time. Now, I know F91 has gotten a lot of credit lately for, you know, winning so many liquidations and everything. But, you know, if you look at Fengzi's play and you look at F91's play, Fengzi is much closer to a Korean. And his style is really actually quite great. Even though he's a little bit on the cheesy side, uh, Fengzi is a, a very superior Zerg player in my opinion. So I'm really glad to see him finally win a big event like this. Second place, now this is the big surprise, Tudmi who is actually a Zerg player who's been very cheesy and hasn't ever really done anything before. You know, for those foreigners out there who have actually played him on Icy Cup before, he didn't seem very good about 15 months ago. But here he is, second place in China, so he has definitely improved a lot. And then third place, PJ. That guy is top three in every tournament since the beginning of time in China. Uh, total props to him for making another finals of the World Cyber Games. 
and he recently gave an interview on ghostofgamers.net. I definitely say that you should go check out this interview. Uh, it's actually a really great interview that gives us some insight into the Chinese scene and what they're doing. Uh, the actual team that they're on, SC, uh, I forget what it stands for, Star Carrier or something like that, uh, they have actually a house with an A team and a B team. And now the A team is Vulture plus those three players. So obviously this team is doing something right. They are really training quite hard. And then they have a B team with four players, as well as online practice partners. Now, here is the part that really got to me. Uh, PJ said that they actually have coaches which help the players to analyze maps and strategies and whatnot. And this kind of scares me a little bit because it looks to me like they're just copying directly the Korean scene. And this is actually something that's very wrong with the Korean scene, is that most of the coaches over there are glorified managers. These are actually people who managed these teams, uh, made sure the players were fed, made sure that they had places to live, they got to their matches on time and stuff like that, and then basically just took over head coaching positions. Now these people actually, these old school coaches, they don't really know much about the game and they cannot actually coach the players because the players obviously much better at the game, understand the game much better than the coaches. Now it looks like China has kind of just copied this and been like, oh, this is what they're doing. They're better than us. We better do that. That is not the case. Now, this is actually, I'm a little bit disturbed about this, that they have coaches that do this. I don't know who would even be qualified to do such a thing because the Chinese actually don't play StarCraft exactly right. Now, their ProDosses are quite good. LX, PJ, top of the line ProDosses, even in the world. I mean, these guys played on SK21. They know how to play the game greatly. Uh, Fengzi, in my opinion, a really great Zerg, knows how to play the game. But then you look at some of their other players, such as F91. Now, F91 is a great player, don't get me wrong, but he does not play StarCraft correctly. If you actually watch his replays, his build orders are actually subpar, and he makes up for that with his intelligent play. But, you know, he's not doing the right build orders, and it's kind of weird play, just randomly going Hydra and stuff like that. And while well, it catches people off guard and he ends up winning overall, um, it's not exactly how you want to play, and it doesn't have as much potential as a player like Fengzi. So this is really their second or third best Zerg already that just doesn't really play the game quite right. And then you look at their top Terran players. And, well, they have some good Terran players. I mean, Super, he is a good Terran, but he plays the game wrong. Uh, if you watched him during the ESWC, go watch those VODs. We have some on the site. When he was playing some high, high-level TVPs, he was actually going four factory tanks, skipping upgrades, getting very late vessels, and it ended up costing him uh, some games. Even though he ended up winning the whole tournament, uh, it was more through the poor play of his opponents than through his own superior play. So we see that even the top Chinese players that are active don't really completely understand how to play the game. So to have coaches analyzing things for them, I have to ask, who are these people and how are they able to do this? Uh, I, I kind of feel like, you know what, with this kind of respect-filled culture that we see a lot in the Eastern Asian countries, uh, this can be quite detrimental because you're having someone tell you, an older person most likely, telling you, okay, you should play in this way, do these things, and they just, kind of follow that despite it maybe being extremely wrong you know not that many people in China really understand the game in fact even in Korea it's said that only you know a very small percentage five to ten percent of pro gamers even really understand StarCraft it's just a bunch of copying upon copying upon copying uh, that Koreans do because that'll get you good so quick I mean that is the way to do it and then learn the game after you get good at it so you know this it's a little bit disturbing uh, I, I hope that doesn't slow them up any, but we'll have to see. Uh, obviously, this team is doing something right. Three of their players on their A team got the top three spots in their WCG. So, great work to them.